Day. So that's something we would obviously be ready to get uh, get into. On a micro scale, you can see that this is even more bullish. When I talk about a micro scale here, I'm talking about the last hour. On a micro micro scale, we can see obviously that that rally there on a micro micro scale is still relatively uh, fair valued. But on a short term basis, we are now very very definitely keen on the long side of the markets. Yes or no? Absolutely. So my original thoughts on the cash open is it's going to be bullish. That's what my original thought would be based on simply this storyline. Coming into this storyline, I also have the pre-market trend that's already established quite there. So we already know that the pre-market trend is also bullish. Is that not good news? So now the short term value is bullish. The pre-market trend is bullish. So now I'm thinking buy side opportunities. I look to the left and I've got two levels I can choose to try and buy into. There's obviously the very, very, very top edge at 55 and a half, or there's the BSG squeeze, which would be 55. Now we also know that 55 is an incredibly important level, right? We know that as the price goes above 55, there's going to be a lot of what? Potential dealer hedging. So if there's going to be a potentially a lot of dealer hedging, we know there's going to be a lot of buy orders up here, right? So I prefer the BSG squeeze. You might say, well, the difference is only literally one tick, but that one tick can make a big difference in the fills you get, guys. That one tick can, especially if you're at a massive wholesale price level as well, like the 55 level. So what happens? Of course, you've got your buy stop order at 55s. You might have a buy stop order at 55 quarters. Buy stop order at 55 halves. Buy stop order at 55 three quarters if you must. 55 three quarters. Okay. So now we have a trade. We've got a buy stop order ready to trade. And what happens? Boom. You're in the trade literally instantly on the cash open. Does everybody agree with that cash open strategy? Does everybody agree that that's what they would have been looking for on their cash open strategy as well? When we look at the trades that went off in those areas, you can see that there was massive absorption into the cash open on the actual cash open itself. The price actually went down before it went up. So this is the first candle of the cash open, right? This is really the first candle of the cash open here. So we're sitting there with 55 quarter buy stops. We're sitting there with 55 quarter buy stops, which is just in there. And obviously the price drops down. We get absorption here. See the blue boxes? That's called absorption. Now, obviously, if that's the cash open, you can see that on that absorption print, look at the dealer's flip. What does anybody see about the dealer's flip? Look at the Charlie D trade. What's the Charlie D trade? Is it a buy or a sell transition? Tim, Charlie D, buy or sell transition? Come on, guys. It's dead obvious. Should have taken you a fraction of a second to type it in. It's a buy transition, right? So we see that it goes blue on that candle right there. You can see we get a buy transition right there. And we've also got the big absorption liens, right? So there's the big absorption liens right there. We can see that the huge volume is up here. So during that candle, we don't have to buy at 55 halves or 55 quarters anymore, do we? Yes or no? No, no, we don't have to buy at 55 quarters, 55 halves. Because that was only before the cash open. Now into the cash open, I can look down this order flow here and I can see there's a, a hundred lot seller. So if I wanted to be really aggressive, I could have put my buy stop order behind that hundred lot. Or I could now put it in at this price here because that's where the volume is. The POC is right there, right? So I could actually put my buy stop in at 55. Now the good news is there was tons of liquidity at 55 getting filled there because obviously people are trying to hold that price bid, a price offered at the moment. 
We know that if we can get above 55, the market makers will pour into that trade. So we're already aware that we're probably going to get a real popper on this. And then that's exactly what happened. We got a real money popper off 55s up to a high price of 64s. We made nine points. We made nine points, guys, in just two minutes. 450 bucks in two minutes, guys. Kind of crazy, isn't it, when you think about it? Kind of crazy. And now what have we got? Well, now we've got a buy side, sell side level for our S&P. Okay, we've now got a buy side, sell side level. So we could obviously run this as a little uh, ledge here. So we could do 55, 54 for a RGL. Yes, 54, 55 for an RGL. Yes, no, does that what everybody got? Feedback, if you don't mind. 54, 55 RGL. Now, obviously, based on that, you want to try and figure out whether the value is now going bearish at the top line. And obviously, after that big buy trade, you can see the value remained bear, uh, bullish all the way through that original phase. So that was pretty good, right? We got a very, very nice popper right there. 55, 54s, new RGL price for the cash market open. So we're in good shape, right? We're in great shape now. We've already made our first massive profit on the day. We've already made our first massive profits at 55 bid. We got a high price of 65, nearly $500, $400-$500 already made, guys, two minutes. What's not to like, right? What's not to like? What happens? The price retests the highs on massively declining volumes. We got this very aggressive sell-side reversal coming in. Now, at this stage, of course, um, I want to now take a look at the early volatility. Why? Well, because we're just looking at sentiment just now. So I want to now check out on the volatility to see if the volatility at that top edge is diverging or holding. I want to get a read on what the volatility is doing as a whole against the previous day. So now I want to get into the volatility storyline. I want to get into the various volatilities to see where we are on a macro scale basis. Okay. So on a macro scale basis, I quite like the volatility for the buy side up here. You can see against yesterday's close and even yesterday's high, which obviously, interestingly enough, well, hopefully you already knew about this because this is a price you've already marked on your screens, yes or no? Did you all have the overnight, the uh, previous day highs and lows on your screens? We have told you, by the way, a billion times to do it, so I'm hoping you've done it. Yesterday's highs, yesterday's lows, you all had those prices. Good, so if you've got those prices, you would have known about that 68 sell opportunity, you'd have known about at least a profit take at 68, right? You'd have known about that top line, you'd have known about that edge into this area to try and make sure you don't just give away a load of money. But I don't like it as a, I don't like it as a sell trade there. I don't like it as a sell trade at that price. I, I thought we were going to do a little bit better if I'm being perfectly honest. So I was a little bit surprised when we got a level two sticking out at that stage. Well, that's okay. You know what? The market can still surprise you every now and then. We've been in a good run, right? We've got a good price. We've been in a good run since the London Open. There's always going to be profit takers when we come up into these areas. Anyway, best time to take profits. And the big drop off in volumes was quite severe, to be perfectly honest. And obviously, when we start seeing that big sell candle there, you're thinking to yourself, that's a big volume reversal. You're not going to stand in front of that, guys. That is what you call a block trade reversal. Do you understand that? It looks like a block trade reversal right there. That's why there's a little red dash here. Why? Because I've got the block trade finders on these charts, right? So it finds the block trades for you. It does it in hindsight, of course, but that's now a block trade. So there's a block trade reversal comes in there at that stage. And what happens? Well, there's our RGL at 55, 54. So what happens at 54s? Values bearish. Okay, so we're now look, thinking to ourselves at 54s, well, you know what? It's a volatility expansion. It's a volatility expansion, right? So what's going to happen? Well, I would expect to see a volatility expansion, right? So I'm expecting this. So where is it going to go to? Well, I know that that's the bracket low and that's the bracket high. I already know where the target price is, yes or no? Did everybody have this target price? Yes, are we all good on this so far? 
So we all have a target price because we've just completed an, an N shape. It's a top edge bracket, right? We've completed the N shape. And now what is the trade? Well, we know where the target price is. So what the trade is, of course, is the sell trade. Remember, it's a volatility expansion. So we sell it there, yes? We sell it there. We are trying to expand the volatility. We're trying to widen the bubble against these key references. The price will not stay at this price forever. It's buy side above, sell side below. That's what an RGL is, isn't it? Set buy side above, sell side below. So there's your sell trade. And obviously, there was other opportunities to sell it again there if you wanted it. If you, if you liked it enough, if you wanted it. Well, look at the uh, sentiment, guys. The sentiment's going up. Interesting. Let's take a look at the value of the uh, narrative on volatilities. Well, the volatility hadn't agreed with the sentiment until we got the bottom edge here. So where do you think the buy trade is? Hmm. Are you starting to see how you start working this as a storyline? Well, we know the buy trade is here because that was the target price. It's also the level two rejection at the bottom edges here. We can already tell that the volatility is getting cheaper. On the down tick, black line's rising. This is S&P VIX, S&P VXX, right? S&P VXX. We already can tell that the sentiment seems to be heavily weighing on, uh, heavily weighing on the sell side business. They're really not in the right position at any stage here. So with the sentiment really bullish, why is the NASDAQ outperforming the Dow Jones? It's all about growth. It's all about price to earnings. It's all about price to earnings, right? The bigger the pop, the bigger the pop. The bigger the sentiment, the bigger the upside potential. Crazy, isn't it? If we want to verify that against the Russell, you can see the Russell at the bottom edge was also agreeing. It's kind of doubled back on itself, but... It's not my favorite measure because the Russell's a very, very, very fluid mover. But to confirm a bottom edge, I like to every now and then flash it up just to make sure I'm getting the same thing on the Russell. We were. So I love this bottom edge for a buy trade. Love it, love it, love it. Not on the first one, but on that exhaustion second one right there. I love that as a buy trade. Am I going to resell this? Well, would you resell it with the value doing that? I don't think so, Mike. Would you take profits? Of course I would. But I'm not going to sell it to get net short. This is the same as the storylines about the delta, the pump and dumps, the bear raids, the exhaustions, the idea of what's happening in these areas, this idea of spoof trades, this idea of uh, spoofing the buyers or the sellers into certain positions. <clears throat> it has to always be in context. It has to always be in context. So obviously, when I see this idea evolving, I can put all the contexts together, can I? I can start putting all the contexts together in this area. I can start seeing that the bottom edge is really actually exhaustion. So I expect it to hang around in here for a while. And obviously, the, fa the fact that we didn't get filled at the bottom edge here, the fact that we didn't get a new lower price here, we know it's exhausted because we can see that from our delta read. There are no sellers on that sell-off, yes? There was no sellers on that sell-off. Look at the divergence, guys, on the sell-side deltas. So there's a massive amount of buyers came in in the open, and they didn't puke on that drop at that stage, yes? They didn't puke on the drop. So when they didn't throw away their positions on the drop, you're starting to think to yourself, get me in, get me in, get me in, get me in. And there was your buy trade. And what happens? Oh, your buy trade just took up you up to the first target price. This is going to turn into a, a very strong RGL, guys. You can see that already. It's going to turn into a very strong RGL. That's why we take profits at it. It's going to probably start filling out today. It'll become a normal distribution between the high and the low. And now we have the initial range. Does everybody agree with that? We've now got the initial range. It starts at half past two, and it usually finishes around about... 20 past two. Well, obviously, we've got an extra little bit of an extension here to 1448s, but now we've got something that's good enough for an, uh, um, an initial range. What do we do with the initial ranges? We extend them to see where the target prices are. So when that's an original 
starting point, we simply take it up to those areas there, and we now have two new price points. We now have this price point here for a possible sell, and we now have this price point here for a possible buy. Does everybody agree with those initial ranges? Because what's going to happen, or what we hope is going to happen is, that in terms of a profile, what's going to happen is we're going to have this storyline evolving into this, aren't we? I'll take a screenshot so I can draw it rather than try to do it on this chart. So what are we expecting to happen in terms of this storyline? Well, it would be reasonable, I think, at the moment, to think about this storyline as something that looks maybe a little bit like this. Is that something that you can start to see? Is that something you can start to recognize for yourselves now? In other words, we can see this area here as the value area high. We can start to recognize the probability that this is the value area low. And what we're looking for is we're looking for volume spikes in these areas here going forward. Does that make sense to everybody from a profile perspective? Because if we're not getting a volatility expansion off the RGL, then of course we're still expecting it to expand, otherwise the market makers are not going to make any money today. But what we'll be thinking is if the initial balance is not expanding, then perhaps the market maker may hold this rotation in for longer. And then we can start to see that storyline unfolding on the right hand edge of the charts. Yeah. So yet again, one, only one person understands that. OK, we'll maybe have to cover that in classroom. Out of 100 people, I thought more than one would get that. <laughs> 